In the early 1900s, the discipline of scientific management was introduced by Fred Taylor. So scientific management involves breaking down work into discrete little chunks, um, finding the best way to achieve the task, and making sure people comply with that best way. So essentially, decomposing work, finding out the different steps and, and, and sort of stages in that task, and understanding and making people comply with how that best way should be put into place. So some principles underpinning scientific management or Taylorist thinking are the following. Don't allow people to work by habit or heuristic, little rules they might have formed. Human judgment cannot be trusted to generate efficiency. Number two, match workers to the job based on their skill and their experience and their abilities. Number three, monitor performance and ensure compliance with the most efficient methods is achieved. And lastly, managers plan and train, whereas workers actually do the work. So there's a divide um, in the hierarchy of the organization. So Taylorist principles really created a departure from the guilds and the craftsmanship of previous ages. People were no longer necessarily seen as creative, innovative, and internally motivated, you know, self-driven. Uh, it really started to encourage those transactional relationships between management and workers, a growing divide between the two kind of classes in organisations. Workers were expected to just carry out the job uh, exactly as was instruct instructed, so very much an inflexible way of, of doing the job. However, what we know now in today's time is that there's at least three things that we need to get right to create a functioning organisation. People must be induced to enter and remain in the organisation, so kind of enticed to come in because of like, reputation or benefits or, or sort of capacity to improve. People carry out their roles in a dependable way, so they kind of do the work in a way that's reliable and, and effective. And importantly, and this is where the Taylorist perspective really went wrong, is that people must engage in their work using innovation and sort of spontaneous activity. We can't treat them like machines and expect them to produce the same widgets again and again and again without becoming disengaged or um, kind of um, demotivated. So Taylorism redirect, directly resulted in the introduction of what we know now as safety procedures. But just what exactly is a safety procedure? Well, there's a definition we can refer to, and what it says is it's a defined state of a system or an organisation or a defined way of behaving in response to a predictable scenario established before the event and imposed on and accepted by those actually performing the work to achieve or improve the level of safety. So it's not to say procedures are all bad, rather procedures and rules can be helpful if we're demonstrating compliance to someone else, like a regulator or a certification body, or if we identify a best practice, and we want to note that down and make sure that others replicate it and, and do that best practice moving forward. The problem creeps in, though, with something called hindsight bias. So hindsight bias is where we say, well, they should have known better. Why didn't they expect or anticipate that things would go wrong? How did they make that silly decision or that mistake? So hindsight re bias results in what we might call non-compliance or violations being identified as the root cause of accidents. And that's unhelpful for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it creates conflicts of interest where maybe the manufacturers don't take ownership. They're happy just to blame the individual operator who's doing the job. And also selection bias because we focus in on when things go wrong but maybe violations are happening all the time and we're just not noticing them, we're just not paying attention to them, we're simply not learning from them. So rules are constraints, they stop people doing certain things, but also they protect against problems if the rule is good. So if it's a good rule, it's effective and it's helpful for the organisation. They serve as guidelines for action, so what do we do in this situation? And also when they're done well, when they're learned from and improved, they represent successive lessons learned over the course of many, many years, perhaps, as, as a task is undertaken. So a typical way that safety procedures are implemented is sort of that top-down, you know, management specify the procedures and then enforce them on others to follow. It's usually sort of an if-then-do kind of process. So if this situation, then do this step, um, this is the outcome that you will achieve. And safety results from that procedure being followed. That means better safety requires more procedures and better compliance. I guess one of the key points that we really need to think about carefully is that under this model, uh, giving workers discretion or the independence to make their own decisions is actually unsafe. 
the key assumption of this mode is that people are problematic and they're errors or problems to be controlled, basically, that the procedures give them a way forward. So some problems with that approach of safety procedures in general, make being more prescriptive kind of standardised ways of doing things, uh, rules can be corrupted. They can be put in place to satisfy a regulator or a certification body rather than actually achieve operational safety. Rules can lead to excessive bureaucracy where work must be completely specified before it can be done. So you've got to have a, you know, the safe work method statement um, entirely completed before we can even start the job. And that can be a, a source of productivity loss, for example. There's a phenomenon called working to rule as well. So if we only followed every single procedure in our organisation, maybe we, we wouldn't be doing any work at all. We could stall productivity completely. Rules and procedures also can stifle innovation because they're hard to change once they're established. People are hesitant to take them away or change them. And it assumes that order and stability in organisations is achieved rationally and through constraining people. People are seen to behave like computers or machines where give them an input and they'll produce the output that you're looking for. <laughs>